Hi, this is the second installment in a series of three videos showing you how I mill my own lumber. Today, we're gonna to cover different ways to speed up the drying process. So at this point, we've milled our lumber and now we need it to dry so that we can use it. But it can take up to two years to dry a two inch slab using natural methods like putting it outside. So I'm gonna show you a couple methods that I've used in the past to speed that up to two months uh, depending on the method that you choose and the thickness of the slab that you're drying. Let's get started. I started by laying out a level base to hold the slabs off the floor by laying out 4x4s approximately 2 feet apart from each other. I then put a narrower piece on top of the 4x4 to minimize the contact area with the slab. It is important that these pieces extend the entire width of the slab. I then place my first slab on top and position another spacer on top of the slab. These spacers are called stickers. It is important that the stickers are positioned directly above the row that is under it, for two reasons. The first is that it provides a moisture barrier, which will prevent and minimize checking. If done properly, checking will not continue past the stickers. The second reason is that as we stack the slabs on top of each other, the weight will prevent and minimize warping. You can see that I take my chances with the top board. If I wanted to minimize warping in the top board, I could add a top layer of plywood weighted down with cinder blocks to help prevent movement. I then close the garage doors and leave it with a dehumidifier and three fans blowing to maximize airflow and facilitate the drying. It is also good practice to flip the wood every seven to 10 days to help minimize warping as well. When I flip the wood, I also monitor where it is in the drying process using a moisture meter. You can see that this board is at 10.5%, which is close, but not quite at the 9 to 9.5% that we're shooting for. So it'll stay in for another 10 to 14 days. If any mold or mildew is found, I spray it with undiluted white vinegar and let it dry before restacking. This will prevent the mold from spreading and any mark that's left on it will come off during the sanding process. All right, so in that last bit, we learned how to sticker the wood and how to properly stack it. Uh, we're gonna go through some alternative methods and we're gonna breeze through that part a little quicker, but it's important to mention that I do the same process for stacking in all of the methods that we're covering. For smaller batches, I use an old glass kiln that I have. I stack the pieces in using the same separating method that I used before, being sure to stack it away from the heat elements. When I close the lid, I'm sure to leave it cracked just a little bit so that it'll be well vented. I then run 12 to 24 hour cycles at 150 degrees, checking it every day to see where the moisture content is, again shooting for 9 to 9.5 percent. A one and a half to two inch thick piece can be ready within seven to ten days. The disadvantage is that only fairly small pieces can be dried in this manner. If you don't have a kiln, an oven will work the same. But certain types of wood can omit an odor, so that is something to be aware of. When using this method, it's always best to do it when you're going to be sticking around the house for a bit. If you leave, be sure to turn off your oven or your kiln. It's okay to do this process in multiple bursts. It will not impact the speed at which the wood dries if you need to take it out to cook dinner and then put it back in after the oven's cooled down a bit. The same method that I used in the garage can also be done in a guest room or other indoor room. I put a tarp down to minimize the mess and place 4x4s and stack the wood the same way that I did earlier in the garage. I set up a fan and a dehumidifier, closed the door and let it run. These smaller pieces dried in about four weeks while larger two inch thick by nine foot slabs of cherry took about two months.
So those are a few methods that I've used in the past to dry different sizes of slabs. There are obviously a lot of different methods. If you have a large yard, but you don't have the inside space like I use, you can build a solar kiln. Uh, Caleb Harris of You Can Make This Too has a great tutorial on that. I'd recommend going and checking it out. We're gonna link that down below. If you found this video helpful, please click subscribe.